Stormy Fort. Let's go on Choice FM. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for tuning in to The Art of Listening. I am your host, Stormy Fort. And uh, we have two wonderful guests in the studio with us this morning. We have Mr. Kelvin Barr, Uncle Barr Gervais, in with <laughs> us with the Black First Network directory. And then we also have uh, Mr. Antoine uh, Marshall in with us, who is a uh, attorney here in uh, Wake County. And we're doing a crossover show today. It's going to be a two-hour um, show with... Um, the, uh, the the legal way with Antoine Webby and he'll be joining us um, shortly. So, gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, how y'all doing today? Magnificent. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, I love being in here with the money man. So, oh, you know. oh who? Antoine. <laughs> nah, you talking wrong person. <laughs> Didn't she just say you were the attorney? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm in here with the money man, Kevin Gervais, connected to all the black businesses in the. Uh, Triangle area, but also the eastern part of the state. Correct? Yes, most definitely. You know, when you think of black businesses, you do think of you know Durham and Charlotte. Right. And, but you know, I do Wilson and Rocky Mountain. All those areas. There are yeah. Tons of black businesses in those areas. You got it on lockdown. You got it on lockdown. I try. I'm trying. I'm trying so. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, so, if you got any questions for our guests this morning, if you want to give us a call in the Triangle area, the number is nine one nine eight seven two nine two one zero. Again, that number is nine one nine. Eight seven two nine two one zero, and if you're listening in the eastern part of the state, the number is two five two nine three seven seven four zero zero. Again, that number is two five two nine three seven seven four zero zero. So, Calvin, this is your first time on with us. Tell mm-hmm. us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, my name is Kelvin Bear. It's pronounced Bear. Bear. It's spelled Bear. different, but it's pronounced. It's I call pronounced. it Bar all the time. Yeah, you do, but it's just, and I call you Fort you Forte right, right, right. all the time. Right. So, <laughs> we, we let it slide, but we know who we're referring exactly, to. Exactly, exactly. Um, you know, I'm I'm an advocate. I, I was um, I've been in media, you know, all of my entire life. Mm-hmm. You know, I began selling newspapers at seven years old. Right. That's when literally probably everybody in Raleigh will remember me. Right. Riding bikes, selling newspapers and um And not just any paper, you gotta tell all that paper. paper. Is. <laughs> well, I sold I sold for the Carolinian newspaper. My gra- grandfather started the Carolinian newspaper. Right, right, okay. You know, and um I sold for them my entire life and moved up through the ranks of circulation into or uh, doing articles and journalism into advertising and just built a relationship uh, in the beginning with just people in Raleigh and the eastern part of North Carolina where we were circulating, you know. Mm-hmm. I um, just built a relationship with the black businesses. And I would watch my parents, you know, they had a, a children's program. And I would mm-hmm. watch my parents, you know, they didn't have a 501c3. Mm-hmm. And they didn't do, you know, uh, 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 loans. Or anything like that, or grants. Right. So they would go to these black businesses, and this is in the eighties. So they would go to these black businesses and get, you know, fifty dollars here, a hundred dollars there, depending upon what the business is. And they would utilize the funds for the children in their program. This is probably around sixty to eighty children for years. They did this. Okay. And um, it got into me the importance of black businesses Mm -hmm. and how important it is that black businesses take care of their community. And so. Growing up with that and then them owning a black business and then me just recognizing all the black business in the community. So it just grew in me to, to keep that alive and right. keep that, that, that spirit alive. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so is that how you uh, developed the Black First Network? Yeah, so the Black First Network, um, what I did was actually, as we recognize, you know, black businesses in North Carolina are closing. I mean, mm-hmm. across the nation, nationwide. Right, right, right. You know, here where we are, you know, uh, they're closing daily. Mm-hmm. They're closing daily. And uh, a lot of it is due to, you know, just patronage. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the patronage is suffering not just because, you know, folks <clears throat> don't support black-owned businesses, even though that is a large factor in it. Right. But it's not the only factor. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is because we don't know our services. Right. We don't know our locations. We don't know where we are. Right. Yeah. And I had to figure out how could we have. A, a, a sort of a, a directory mm-hmm. that everybody could have access to to include black businesses in their daily spending, not just Black History Month, right? You know, <laughs> <laughs> not just when you need, <laughs> not just when you need shea butter or a funeral home, right. okay? But we're talking about actually including us in your day to day spending in your in your budgeting right. for the week, and and it was like I, I wanted us to be able to have something quick where I could just say, okay. Oh, you know, uh, glass blowers. Right. And I can Google it and we look it up real we quick. Black glass blowers? Yes, yes, we have one. <laughs> yes, we do. We no, have no, no, I learned something already. Yes, we do. And, and, we, and that's, see, that's what I mean, you know. 
we don't know our services. We traditionally know we have beauty shops, barber salons, right. funeral homes. Right. You know, but all of our services are vast, and some of them are brick and mortar, some of them are not. Right. Some of them are mobile, being mm -hmm. that technology allows us to be mobile mm -hmm. nowadays. So I just wanted us to be able to focus in right. on those businesses so that those businesses businesses can can prosper and then in turn right. focus on the community. Yeah. And we can set up a situation for us to take care of ourselves financially and economically. Now how long have you been doing this? My entire life. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as since you as far as seven. yeah. <laughs> but as far as the Black First Network, um I, I've been doing it this is the third year. Okay. And in three years I have been to thirteen counties and I've focused on thirteen counties. And in those thirteen counties I've collected Close to 4,100 black-owned businesses. 4,100? 4,100 black-owned businesses. In 13 counties. In 13 counties in North Carolina. And mind you, I have not been to Greensboro and Charlotte yet. So these are, four, and these are not Uncle Ted. These are not shade tree mechanics. These are, not, <laughs> these are actual, you know, businesses. Yeah. Tax-paying businesses. <laughs> right. And, e and even if the person has a, a, a regular, traditional nine-to-five, they still have a side business that right. is, you know, a quality business. And I try, you know, and I'm not going to sit here and say I know each and every single person, right. person personally. However, I try to. Right. And I do know a majority of them personally to be able to say, you know, if you ask me for something, I can tell you. You know, go to such and such or go there in, in these 13 counties. So if I say, hey, I need somebody in Wilson to do my taxes, you got somebody. I know somebody for you. <laughs> and, and I'm going to tell you what's so difficult. What was so difficult about it is that, you know, as I'm sure you guys know, you can't Google black owned businesses. Yeah. Really? No. You can't Google black owned businesses. Now, when you do, and this is not throwing shade at any, you know, any other businesses, any other body that's attempting to do this, but when you do, there are only two certain directories that pop up outside of my directory. Because I was about to say, Black First Academy, one of them. <laughs> but, but before I started the Black First, before I began two years ago and started the Black First Network, there were only two businesses that had something of a directory popped up. One of them was so large, it tried to encompass every black business in the nation. And it was so large that it had been four years before they updated anything on North Carolina. Wow. Okay. And then in North Carolina, they literally only had like 127 businesses for North Carolina. You see what I'm saying? So what I had to do was actually go to these cities, go to these towns in North Carolina. And, 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 and folks will tell you, I, I would stand at Walmart in Tarboro for two hours stopping black folks. Hey, who cuts your hair? What church do you go to? Who does your taxes? And then I go to, to Pitt County and do the same thing. And then I come back to Harney. Then I go to Warrington. And I did this all over a, a few years, just driving to these towns and connecting with folks. Or so folks will be like, you know, well, um, my aunt has her own bakery. And give me a business card. And I call the aunt. And the aunt will say, hey, well, I'm a part of this club. And those are big business owners. Or the, my church has a situation where we do something with businesses. And they'll plug me with that. So... Everybody has been real. I haven't run into any issues. Everybody has been real receptive. And I still, I mean, I got a business early this morning. You know, I collect businesses. <laughs> yeah, I collect businesses daily. Yeah. Listen, I will drive. If I see, you know how we have the magnets on the side of our vehicles to advertise our business. Yep, right. I will drive up to see if it's a black person. <laughs> and I would say, hey, I'm, and I would do the international symbol, I'm going to call you. And I roll my window down, I'll take a picture of the decal. Okay. You see, and I will contact them later and explain to them what I am because this is what we have to do to organize these businesses because there's no other way for us to say, you know, this is a black owned business. Right. You see, so I, I feel that. By by bringing by bringing these businesses to the forefront, we'll have a better chance of our community growing economically and us empowering ourselves. Now, I love what you're doing, but you know I'm about to hit you with a question. Of right? course, because you know you know what the question is. No, know, which but, one? Because you know, Kevin and I have had extensive conversations. Extensive. <laughs> you know, extensive. Is lunch. that is that is that the word for it? <laughs> That's the word we're going to use for. Look, we go to lunch, and it's a four-hour lunch. You know, me and Kevin sitting there just That's right. it up. and still forget about things to talk about. Right. You know, I mean, like, I forgot to talk about this, but um. Oh, first of all, I want to introduce uh, Antoine Whitney, who's joining us uh, from the Legal Way for this two-hour crossover show. Good morning, Antoine. 
Good morning. Sorry, it's a little bit late. That's all right. Sorry, Sorry brother. Glad you're here. Traffic That's my That's my So I saw this post this week on Facebook, and I instantly thought of you, and I said, I'm going to save this for the show. <laughs> so somebody said, um, you know, I'm always hearing that we're supposed to support black businesses, and you know, but I try to call. They won't call me back, or, you know, they won't do what they're supposed to do. And, you know, you're not a top of something more. Yes. So what's your take on that part of it in terms of, you know, <coughs> our community not necessarily buying into black business? Well, first of all, let me say that that's true. You have problems with every business. Mm -hmm. Have we not been on the phone for four hours with Time Warner Cable? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> look, look, everybody like you. Yeah. Have, you, have you not had a dispute with Sprint? Yeah. <laughs> have you not cussed the employee or two out at McDonald's? Well, yeah. especially when they want to charge you for that sauce. But you want to give me one container of sauce? Right. Do you but, with your life? But when we go to Brother Carl, but when we go to Jack Seafood, oh yeah, all right, I forgot about Carl. <laughs> when we have, when we have, when we go to Jack Seafood and we have that one bad experience, we want to post about it. We want to tell everybody, Jack. It's the conditioning of our mind. We have been conditioned, and that's the only thing. We have been conditioned to not respect our own business. Right. You see, we seem not to even care that every other nationality and race is boycotting our businesses twenty four seven. Mm. Hit that one more time. Every other race <laughs> and nationality is boycotting black businesses every day, 24-7. Explain it. We are not included in anybody's budget. Like you and I include Walmart in our budget, Target in our budget, the Asian restaurants in our budget, the hair salons, the nail salons that are not black owned, the way we patronize any hotels that are owned by anybody that is not. We constantly, every single day, pour every dollar we get into non-black individuals and nobody, nobody is pouring their money into us. You know what? That's so deep. You know, I love, I love <laughs> nobody. I can run into jerk masses, but you don't let us see folks who don't look like us eating junk and, food yeah. and stuff like that. Exactly. And you see, it's like you have a, and of course there's exceptions to the rule when you're in you know, Jack Seafood, or when you're in Mums, or when you're at the barbershop, brother. I know you got. You know, I haven't had a haircut in a long time. But you can verify for me. <laughs> but you can verify for me that you have one or two non-blacks. You have one or two non-blacks to come and pay show patronage to your beauty salon, but it's never enough to change the spectrum right. mm -hmm. of that money influx. Right. It's never enough. And this is nationwide. So when our dollar goes, and, and we know everybody has to pay Duke Energy. Yeah, because right. yeah, I got to have All some right. Now. right. Everybody has to pay. If you live, in, you, live in the, <laughs> you live in the city of Raleigh, you live in the town of Cary, you have to pay your tax, you have to pay so. But we're not talking about that. Black folks are the only folks in the triangle that are 100% dependent upon white food. Huh? What you mean? There's a Hispanic grocery store. There are Asian grocery stores. White folks own grocery stores. Where where you get your food from? Do you go to black grocery store? Yeah, Demetrius Hunter. Every once in a while, he gets some fruit. Of course, <laughs> shout out, shout out to Demetrius, <laughs> shout out brother Hunter. <laughs> but where does the, where where do the majority of us spend our money? Chain stores, the food line, line. food <laughs> line, Harris <laughs> Teeter. When Kroger was up, you know. Uh, or, you know, some of us do, Dollar General, whatever, whatever. Right. You see, and these people, these are individuals that, and I'm not hating on them. Right. But those, when you're over on their side of town, and uh, like, you know, because they're only Dollar General <laughs> on our side of town. <laughs> All right. <laughs> but when you're on that side of town, you see those streets get paid for. Those 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 lights and, and, and it is trimmed. That <clears> money <throat> is that they're taking care of their community. Right. You see what I'm saying? On my side of town, it's not like that. Well, I mean, because we, you know, like Representative Yvonne Holly talks about the food deserts, and that's like one of her Indeed. pet mm -hmm. projects. Shout out to her. Indeed. And uh, Murphy Senate Governor. Yeah, um, Indeed. Shout, out, yeah shout, shout out, out, shout out. Shout yeah. out. Yeah, she's going to be here next Saturday. So. All right, my um, But, I mean, that's one of her projects she talks about in it's our food community. Deserts. Food deserts. Because, you know, there's a lot of food insecurity Indeed. in our area. And then, you know, you talk about all the health issues and stuff. Indeed. So she can do it. But, 
you know, our folks can't pay, you know, $4 for a bag of organic. Apples. That's that's not, listen, we okay, love to, okay. we love to <laughs> say <laughs> we cannot <laughs> pay. See? We love to <laughs> bring in the money factor, but quick question. Yeah. Who's keeping Burger King in your neighborhood? Who keep Bojangles in your neighborhood? Who keep Subway in your neighborhood? Who keep China Walk in your neighborhood? Whose money is keeping these restaurants wide open and functioning in your community? Chuck's. And, and if I could jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Whose money is it? Exactly. So, it, I go crazy every time I go to Whole Foods and say, man, black folks are eating good. <laughs> Organic, right? Yeah, right. a lot of us. Right. Now let me ask you. Now a lot. Now the reality too is, it's prioritizing. Now if you got folks that will sacrifice, and I'm not saying these are black folks, right? All right, because that's not a stereotype I'm putting out there. But okay, prioritizing plays a part in your diet. Yeah. And your and and what you you know care and y'all know convenience is the cousin to complacency. Right. Yes. Right? Yes. So it is easier for me to run to the the big chain grocery store that is literally right around the corner from my house right. than it is for me to hunt down Demetrius home. All right. We got a question. Hold on. We're going we gonna to pick this back up. Yes. Uh, good morning, caller. Uh, see, see. Okay, good, good morning, caller. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Good morning. Thank you for calling in. What's your question? I, I really don't have a question. I'm just sitting here enjoying the conversation the brother is putting out there today about how we are not patronizing, but we are patronizing everybody else in our community. And I'm just loving the when he said that we will keep going to the McDonald's, to the Bojangles, and everybody else and spend our money instead of just stop doing that and That's right. eating our own. That's right. Really appreciate the brother put that out there. I hope. I can go online and pull up his website and find the black businesses here in the southeast part of Raleigh. And I'm about tired of going and spend my money at the, like he said, the other white supermarket. Can so, plug that website. All right, he's about to give you the website now. That website <laughs> is BFN Black First Network Directory.com. BFN Directory.com. All right, thank you for the call. Okay, so you yeah. said we gotta prioritize, but you know, we have, go ahead. Oh no, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 no. You go ahead. I'll remember. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have. To, we have to prioritize because, for one thing, if we're not if we're not feeding ourselves, we're not fighting anybody. If you can't feed yourself, you're not fighting racism. You're not marching. You're not going to do anything if you can't feed yourself. Because to whom you give the power to feed you, you give the power to starve you. Uh oh. <laughs> so if you if you if you are one hundred percent dependent upon your oppressors to feed you, you don't even feed yourselves. And then who who in here, and I'm including myself, has taught a young person to grow, to plant, to farm. Even though that's factually something that every single one of us need is food. None of us are going to be able to do our jobs if our stomach is growling. You should, no you child. Just look on the face of the three lawyers in here. <laughs> <laughs> no child I is going to be this, able. I didn't have to feed my. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and you have children too. No child is going to be able to focus on our grades, on our on on their classwork if their stomach is growling. Mm -hmm. It's 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 not going to happen. You see, so if we don't even <laughs> step up and begin to feed ourselves, all right, everything else we talk about. Is literally a waste of time if we can't feed ourselves. Because all they have to do is take your food from you. Yep. I mean, look at the scare we went through. <laughs> look at the scare we went through with the government shut down. Imagine if it's a grocery store shut down. Lord, you haven't seen chaos. Venezuela. That paycheck. That paycheck is nothing. Well, I, I was going to ask you. You know, all of us in here have been part of. Of a minority-owned business. Why is it when you're talking about things like grocery stores and those type of businesses? Does it seem like, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a, it's a custom issue as far as the type of businesses we we we, we tend to start? Yes, and that's and that's something I speak about a lot. We have <laughs> we have taken. 
the role of our oppressors sometimes with these businesses where we target our people for money. And that say that again. We target our people for money. <laughs> similar, you know how you know how when you turn on two hour show. You know how you know how when you turn on the TV and you see um Colonel Sanders doing the cabbage patch. <laughs> you know how when you turn on the TV and you hear a rap song and they got a uh, uh, young Jeezy or young Thug selling a cell phone. A sprite. We set the trend. We set the culture. All right, but that also subliminally is telling us. If you want money, you go after the black folks because they're the ones that's reckless with their money and they're going to spend it. So we sometimes, instead of providing a service mm -hmm. that we can benefit from as well as, you know, getting business and being business for business, we automatically, hey, I'm going to create this here, throw some jewels in it, make it bling. Right. Make it make some nice noise. Black folks gonna eat it up, and I'm gonna be rich. All right, we we do that with our business. And a, a term I have coined that I always say, especially you know on the Black First Network and, and my blogs and stuff, right. is that we have to create as Black people universal businesses. Right. And what I mean universal businesses is businesses where you can get everybody's dollar. Right. Now, you may have a talent for braiding hair. All right, you may have a t you may have and, and and one of our only wealth generational wealth businesses are funeral homes. Right. Yeah. All right, that's one of the only ones that you know my granddaddy, daddy, great right. grand grandchild, you know, hold on to that business, you know. But we are not too many folks are letting black folks bury them. Only black folks are gonna let black folks bury them. So we have to start thinking of businesses where we can get everybody's dollar. And then what we also have to do, which is why it's so important that, and sometimes these folks get confused with this, is that we think that, they think that when we say we want black-owned businesses, we only want black folks there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't these, make any these sense. These two ants wants to take any dollar y'all got coming their way. We will take any <laughs> black person. <laughs> it's all green. All any, any, green. Every black person I know that owns a business is going to take every yeah. green yeah. dollar. Look, Chuck can take you every see? dollar too. It's all green. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Chuck? But I had I had I had um I had a, I had a sister uh, uh, who classifies herself as white tell me and ask me that she was like um I told a black should have their own hospital so that when 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 I use the name Tyrone but when Tyrone graduates from Duke he doesn't have to go directly to Duke or Wake Med or or or, or, or Rex he should be able to go to uh, the Frederick Douglass Hospital that's equality. And she was like, well, isn't that being a separatist? And I said, why? She said, because black folks own the hospital. I said, well, how is that being a separatist? She was like, because white folks can't come there. Who told you that? <laughs> but she was dead serious. Because she felt that if black folks owned it, that she was not welcome. And that's because of that, the conditioning that black love, black ownership is white hate. And it's not. You, you translated HBCUs. I mean, I can't tell you how many conversations you have where people say, well, white people aren't welcome to HBCUs. Right. They are. Right. You just got to apply like everybody else. Right? They and get minority press and scholarships, so they go they for, they go for yeah. free. But when, we're talk, but when we're talking about this money, we're in business for business. Yes, a lot of our businesses uh, and all of our businesses and our wealth is to take care of our community, take care of our families first. Yeah. All right. And then take care of our communities and be a part of growing up our black community for our youth. But we're in business for business. We need your dollar in the same manner you need our dollar. All right? But that's going to begin with us pulling some of our dollars back. Let me ask you this question. Let me, I know the story you do this too. The, the Deltas normally have like an economic week. Always, yes. Where they will bring in that's right. young youth, young potential entre entrepreneurs and have them do business plans and things like that. Mm -hmm. And many times, they will think about the type of business they want to start. Mm -hmm. And they will come up with a relatively simplistic business plan. You know, right. where, you, where, where would you want to be? You know, who would your customers be? What is your service? If you were sitting in that seminar, mm -hmm. and you're talking to those kids, and they're between the ages of seven and maybe high school, mm -hmm. how would you engage in a conversation with them 
about the type of business they want to start. Because mm. it's normally the same type of thing they it come is. up with. Selling t-shirts, barbershop, yeah. beauty right. salon, that yeah. kind of thing. And, and, and I don't ever want to poo-poo an idea because I'm thinking, you know what, they're here, they come up with an idea of a business. So maybe as they get older, they will broaden their idea of what they want to start. So I don't right. want to say, well, why do you want to do that? Right. They, you know, you don't want to stomp it out. Right. What would you tell them if you were us in those meetings? Yeah. About, wait a minute, <laughs> Why don't you think about businesses that can serve bigger groups of people mm -hmm. that's more sustainable? Mm -hmm. how, how would you deal with that situation dealing with, with young, young one, people? One thing, especially, especially <clears throat> dealing with the youth when it comes to business and, and everything you're saying, um, some dreams you're going to have to stomp out. Okay. What do some, you mean when you say that? That sounds, that sounds <laughs> rough. We, we get to, killer Mike on the Killer Mike I mean, show. Did y'all see that? But we all know we have... We, we have, stomped we, out those kids' dreams. Sometimes... <laughs> I saw that trigger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Killer Mike. No, sometimes when you're talking... When we're talking about business for a purpose, we can't involve... It's not going to be an emotional situation. We're talking about business. Same as politics. Okay. All right? You have to remove emotions from a lot of things. And just do what needs to be done. Some people always, and a question along with what you're saying, I always have is, you know, well, everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur. Right. Because who's going to buy from and da, da, da. And that's what I mean by stomping out the dreams. Because if they come up with something that you know from being in business, from being around business folks, from being and knowing somebody that owns the business that they're talking about doing, right. and you know the child. And, and you've looked at their plan and you tried to analyze it to the point where, you know, you're like, OK, this is just not it's, it's not the plan and it's, they're not getting it. We have to tell them that I, t I would suggest. Getting in a group. Because everybody's not meant to be an entrepreneur, I'm going to invest. And, and, and make that money and be an entrepreneur that way. So I would always suggest that instead of being that individual, if I if I saw that it was, and I wouldn't like crush their dreams. I'm not telling you to be like, man, this is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and throw that paperwork back to them. Like, you know, go get you an application at Walmart and hang this up. No, I'm not talking about that. But y'all know. That's why Marshall's wrong. Right, right. But y'all know we know how to finesse things. Right. And, I, and I would be in a situation like, here, well, let me introduce you to this sister. And let me see, because she's doing something along the lines. Or let me introduce you to this brother, because he's doing something along the lines maybe that you want to do. You see, and I would try and pair them up and see maybe that person, you know, will, will plug holes, you know, that, that, that way in the first business plan of the other person, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe they will be able to just. All right, well, I'm going to play the financial aspect of it and the, and the physical aspect of it and let this person do the thinking of it and we'll both make the money together. You see what I'm saying? I also kind of want to jump in when you start talking about what types of business that I, I think that people end up going into what they're exposed to. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, if you grew up, you know, you see, hey, there's the funeral director, he's black, and, you know, if, if, all the businesses you know yeah. that are owned by African Americans are funeral homes. Right. right? As an African American, you think, well, if I want to own a business, I got to go to a funeral home right. or you know, right. t-shirt sales or right. whatever. Right. And I think that um, part of it is just that exposure. How are you going to open them up into, hey, I can start my own, you know, cybersecurity pr pr right. program when you don't have a computer? Right. So I mean, I think part of it's not just. Well, I think part of it is, yeah, sometimes you got to crush that dream. But I think a lot of it, is, you know, kids end up growing up and you know getting their experience from what they've been exposed to in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we don't expose them to other possibilities, they're going to fall back into those same tropes as far as, you know, I'm going to start a soul food restaurant, right. I'm going to sell t-shirts, right. and, and they don't ever expand outside of that. Mm -hmm. right. right. I believe also okay. that we also have to recondition our kids into being aware. If they're taught more of ownership and about ownership and about entrepreneurship, maybe they'll find, you know, they'll find something, you know, just looking around. Versus, you know, they're not really, condi we're conditioning, we condition as, I mean, all of us. Your, your mother told you to get a job. Yep. Right. Get good yeah. grades, get a job. Exactly. She's like, you need that. That's, con yeah. that's our conditioning. Yeah. Right. That's, that's, that's our conditioning. And it's safe for us. You see, it's, 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 it feels safe for us to, you know, well, I got this job, I got this pension, or I got this 401k. And it feels safe for us, but sometimes that's, you know, that's hush money. Because you got to tap. Yeah. It's hush money. Sometimes your paycheck is hush money. Right. Because yep. you can have a talent 
that could be turning over millions. Or you could, or you could have a talent that could be saving tons of individuals, but that paycheck is coming. It it safe. And the reality <laughs> is, the more the more money, the more zeros, and the more commas on that paycheck, the less likely you are to walk away. To walk away. <laughs> the less likely you are to cause an uproar. Yeah. The less likely you are, you gonna well, you know it's. It's not that serious. You got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps like I did. You know, we, and this is what happens. So we, you know, we have to we have to condition our children to see things different. Right. We have to condition them to see things different, and 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 we have to speak ownership and creating into them, so that even when they're not around us, and especially with technology today, they can just be like, you know what? I wish it was something that I could use to hold my water while I'm on the storm or I'm on the radio with storm. And bam, they'll they'll invent something. You see, right. we have to we have to instead of, because when you're thinking about okay, let me just get my grades up so I can get this job. Let me get the grades up so I can be the top of my class so that such and such can look at me. I mean, you see what I'm saying? That's just like we're you're conditioning them to be employees, you know, forever. And 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 we're not going to win that way. I had a kid the other day. I was talking to, it used to be the boys club, but I believe it's called My Kids, mm -hmm. My Kids Network, mm -hmm. and so on. And I was talking to them about Black History Month and, you know, being a, a black lawyer and owning my own business and stuff like that. He was absolutely dead set against, you know, go, he wanted to go to school, but he absolutely did not want to come back to his hometown and open a business. Right. Yeah. Right. He want, the only thing he thought about was being in Durham, mm -hmm. Raleigh, mm -hmm. Charlotte, Greensburg, you know, small yeah, city. Yeah. <laughs> and my first thought, very, very smart kid. And my first thought is, man, you know, you know how hard it is to open a law office in Wake County right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> I heard right. That, really. But when I'm talking to younger lawyers, and it's sort of the conversation I got into with Stormy when she decided to open her own law office, is you know what? We have people that need to be served in Sampson County mm. and in Greenville wow. and in Johnston. But that may not be the places where it's glamorous to live. Mm -hmm. But you can make a living that is sustainable. Mm -hmm. So when you run into kids that, when I say kids, I'm talking about teens and 20s too, who are interested in opening a business, how do you communicate that idea that you also need to think about where you're opening this place. Location, location, the location. location. Mm -hmm. But how do you address that part of it? That's going to that's going to be difficult to address. Um, I believe also though that goes back to what I was speaking about the conditioning them to, you know, the ownership. Even the fact that I mean, if you own, and I tell people this all the time when I first started the Black First Network and I went to uh, 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 Tarboro, you know, yeah. and Wilson. That's you another know, place. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but that's right. that's literally you know maybe six counties away, but it's only forty five minutes up the road. Yeah. Right. We can't allow, and that's our condition. We can't allow these imaginary lines that weren't created by us prohibit us. We can't let them prohibit us from our business sales and things. You know, Walmart, gas stations, any 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 large corporation, they'll open. Sitco will open a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Right. Because they're conditioned to do business like that. Sheets will open. Sheets will open up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, even in even in small, even in a small country town, you know, Walmart will find the smallest country town. Dollar General will find Dollar General and Family Dollar will open four stores. Yep. A half a mile from in each Hollywood, other. In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of poverty. You see what I'm saying? We have to condition our youth to understanding. And, and it's really not it's really not a, a concept we're unfamiliar with because I'm sure all of our parents left the South and went to the North at one point in time. Mm -hmm. To some degree, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So leaving home is not the issue. We do, you know, but the, the issue is the returning. And to get them to return, you're going to have to let them know the importance of returning. It was, it, was, it, was, it was always thought that, you know, you got to leave the hood. That's why the hood looked like what it looked like now. Well, they coming in the hood now, so they ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's left of the hood, yeah, what's left yeah, of the hood. But, that, but yeah, right. what, what, what we have to do is, is, is get them to understand what the purpose of, of returning is, you know? And we also have to get them to understand that it doesn't mean you have to sit here. Mm -hmm. You can return, open three or four businesses 
employed folks that are from your town, that are, are, are in your city, that you know, that you grew up with, that you trust, that you love, <coughs> and bounce around. But have a, I believe it's more of a, have something in place for where you came from, You don't even if you're not physically there. That I believe that's what you're saying is right. you know so right. even if I'm not physically uh, I can't I'm not coming like I mean <coughs> it's hard for me because I'm never leaving Southeast Raleigh and I was born and raised there so we'll never have to worry about me leaving and not coming back. <laughs> right. They're gonna chase you out. You never yeah. that's sooner or later. <laughs> but you never have to worry about that. But I believe it's is is more of a factor of having the presence mm-hmm. yeah. in the community <clears throat> that we have to get them to understand. If you have the presence. If it's through property, if it's through businesses, if it's through the children and you're doing and you're linking with other individuals so that your presence is there. That is actually what coming back home is. That's what actually coming. It's not coming back and sit here with me. Right. You see what I'm saying? It's not that. It's, it's your success that you have, whether it's, 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 it's small or large, whatever success you have that is greater than the individuals of where you come from. Come back and shed some light on them in some form or fashion. And and not through just, you know, book bag giveaways. <laughs> and you know, you but actually No, I have no problem. Now no, listen, don't no, don't I'm not saying it that way. The kids do. But y'all know y'all I'm not saying there's anything wrong with book bag giveaways, okay? But you know, we, we can all do better. That can't be your only link to the community. That can't right, be the right. only link to the community. Okay. All right. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with giving away book bags at all, Stokely. <laughs> okay. I support everybody out there having book bag giveaways, okay? But that's 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 all, you know, that's the equivalent of a, a, a million dollar rapper coming giving Jordans to the projects. Well, here you go. <laughs> it's good for that school year. But I need I need structural change. I need an infrastructure. Right. I, I'll buy my own Jordans, thank you very much. <laughs> or make your own Jordans. <laughs> I'll make my own, whatever, you know, whatever right. the case may be. But right. the thing is, you know, let's, we seem to forget sometimes as black people that we're in a bad situation. Right. That we're in an ugly situation. And we get very, very comfortable when the media is not reminding us we're in these situations. You know, I told somebody the other day, you just can't be pro-black and scream about racism in white spaces. Yep. Truth. When white folks create a space and then you want to, you know, be like, oh, this is racism because I can't get in the Oscars. This is racism because of NFL. This is racism because of Starbucks. This is racism because of uh, Netflix. This is racism. Not, not, but but when everything's good and you can go to Starbucks and you can go to NFL, when, every, when everything is good, you say nothing. You don't talk about pulling these children up out the ghettos and the 150 families just in your neighborhood that don't have anywhere to live in. So you just can't be pro-black in white spaces. Right. Pro anything. If you're pro-plumber, pro-teacher, pro-attorney, it's about <laughs> the collective, correct? Right. Yeah. It's not about, and, it, and sometimes as y'all know, it's about the collective against your personal desires. Against what could better benefit you. You have to think about what's best for the collective. Right. That's pro anything. So, yes, I want this Bentley this year. And I want to drop this $250,000 on this Bentley. However, folks where I come from need things that I can provide. So let me drive this car for two, just two more years. Let me drive it two more years. Because <laughs> nothing wrong with it. And listen, and the key is that all of us do it together. We have to do it and time it together the way we time Christmas together. Man, Bentley salesman must hate you because <laughs> the way we right? the way we the way we time Thanksgiving together. So I don't want to hear we can't do it. The way we time Bike Week together. The way we time every the way we time going to see the movies that come out that we love about it. The way we time all of that other stuff collectively together and fork over billions. Of dollars to other Stop individuals. Black Panther. He not had this I didn't say Black Panther. <laughs> I, I didn't say Black Panther. Black Panther. I was not talking about that. <laughs> to me, and, and I'm going to say this. Please do. The things that you're talking about tying together is something that is easy. It's easy to get around doing Thanksgiving and have positive thoughts about how things used to be and could be. But the things you're talking about 
tied together involve a sacrifice. Well, that's the key. And it's going to be hard to get people to sacrifice in 2019 yeah. the same way they were willing to sacrifice in 1960 or 1860. Yes, it is. But did you say hard or impossible? In 2019? You, Nothing's impossible. Exactly. But <laughs> and it has to start somewhere. How many times do we tell each other baby steps? Right. How many times do we say in politics it got to start somewhere? Are we not in 2019 still saying the first black two? Oh, absolutely. yeah. Yes. It got to start black somewhere, DMC bro. Justice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's gonna, so yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna. Be, and trust me, I understand what you're coming from. It'd be, it be time. It's times. I'm, I'm making it seem easy, telling right. it to you now. It's times I sit it with my lady at, at, at the edge of the bed, like. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just really make Nike sales go up <laughs> look, and, and, and she, close out? Look, and she is watching. She gave you several shout outs talking about collective economics and people gotta have capital. So she's watching. Shout out to Aaron Dale. Thank you, Aaron. And, 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 and I will say this I gotta do a, a, a break. This is spinning into a question, which is one of the main Indeed. reasons I had you two on the show today. <laughs> so um, if you're just tuning in, you listen to our listener with Stormy Four. I'm your host, Stormy Four. We're doing a crossover show today with a legal way. We have Antoine Willie in the building as well. Our guest today is Kelvin Bear Gervais, because I always call him Barbers Bear, and uh, Antoine Marshall. If you got any questions for us, the uh, number in the Triangle area is 919-872-9210. Again, that uh, number in the Triangle area is 919-872-9210. And if you're listening in the eastern part of the state, the number is 252-937-7400. Again, that number is 252-937-7400. So we got to hit it. We're about to make some folks mad. We're getting a bunch of questions online. And I'm going to get back to some of those. But you two had a dialogue <laughs> about it. And, and Antoine's question kind of wraps into this. But you two had a dialogue. So I have been boycotting the NFL because of the Colin Kaepernick situation. Yep. And Kevin and I would commiserate a lot. And Indeed. then, and then you know, my man got probably $80 million in his settlement. And then, you know, Antoine Marshall's like, okay, we can all watch football again. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say, say we can all watch football again. Go ahead. She <laughs> said that. I saw, she said it on oh, your yeah, post. Said, said, she said it on your post, though. I ain't quite saying that. Yeah, because I'm going to be watching in the fall, but you and I are going to be arguing about it. Yeah, we're going to be fussing about that. We're going to be fussing about that. So let's, let's talk a little bit about the Colin Kaepernick situation. And I'm going to start with you, Antoine yes. Marshall. Give us your perspective on the settlement and. You know where you think that leaves us in terms of the NFL because yeah. Kevin about to come here and smash us off. Well, oh, see, back, <laughs> I said, do I need to get the background? Whatever right? you want, yeah, yeah, it's good. Okay, just a quick background. If anybody who's not familiar with Colin Kaepernick situation, lived under a rock for the past <laughs> three years. Uh, Colin Kaepernick was a quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers, played pretty well, made a couple of mm-hmm. Pro Bowls, took the team to the Super Bowl. Um, one season he began to sit on the bench during the national anthem and he didn't say anything about it, you know, it was just kind of his silent protest. Um, there was a journalist who saw after the third or fourth game and asked him, you know, hey, we see you sitting during the national anthem. What's going on? And he basically said, I'm, I can't stand for the flag or the national anthem and for the flag right. in a country that still treats African-Americans the way they do. Right. And he was primarily talking about police brutality. Um, that caused a whole bunch of arguments. People were talking about him being disrespectful to the flag, to the country, whatever. He talked with a Green Beret, who was a former NFL player. Um, who told him it'd be more respectful to kneel. And that's when the kneeling started. Okay. Um, And that still didn't satisfy those who were saying he was being disrespectful to the flag. It got very, very political. Donald Trump got in on it. (laughs) Other players began kneeling. High school players began kneeling. College players began kneeling. We saw Ole Miss um, had a couple of basketball players who knelt during the national anthem after the... uh, there was a pro-Confederate rally that right. came. And that was um, sweet, right? Huh? That yeah. was sweet. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it was. That was sweet, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> so after the season, Colin Kaepernick was uh, released from San Francisco 49ers. People thought it was going to be a shoe in for him to get another job because he was a solid quarterback. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't one of the best quarterbacks in the league, but there were quarterbacks far worse than him who got jobs. Pulled out of retirement. Pulled out of retirement <laughs> to get jobs. Jay Cutler. <laughs> well, we can go further down that list than Jay Cutler. Yeah. Yeah. I just hate Jay Cutler. <laughs> For good reason. But, um, so, he never got signed, um, even though they would bring back, like they're pulling people out of retirement, Matt Leinart, um, Rock Oswaller, um, I'm forgetting, uh, 
Josh Lohman from the Bills, who threw five interceptions in one game, in one half of one game. Oh, wow. He got another job before Colin Kaepernick did. <laughs> um, so it was clear he was being blackballed by the league. He's, right. He filed a collusion lawsuit against the league, um, and it ended up settling out of court, what, two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. Um, the if anybody's not familiar with the attorneys, any type of settlement comes with a non-disclosure agreement. So right. part of it is that he couldn't talk about the evidence that he had gathered, the lawsuit at all, or how much he made. But Vegas odds had it over and under at, at $49 million. Mm-hmm. Okay. So he he earned about roughly $50 million in the settlement. Um, so I guess now the so <laughs> what I posted <laughs> and my point... <laughs> Was that there were a lot of people who seemed to be upset about you know the settlement, and they were you know you had some people getting on calling Kaepernick a sellout for settling, mm-hmm. and Mm-mm. my point I was saying I guess what I wanted to say was that I think people had too high of an expectation for this lawsuit. Okay, um, I think that they put too much as far as you know race reconciliation, you know police brutality. They put too much of that into this fight. Even though that is the reason why Colin Kaepernick knelt, the NFL can't really do much about police brutality around the country mm-hmm. other than maybe giving okay. players a voice. That's right. Um, you know, they don't have a police force to oversee. I mean, they can't make policy. Right. So, I mean, outside of that, all they can do is throw money at it or allow their players to have a voice in order to speak out on it. And I think that when people saw that lawsuit, they were they were more upset at the fact that the NFL did, they didn't pull that you know that pound of flesh from the NFL and get some kind of public declaration that he had been blackballed from the league. We all knew that. Like you know, I, I don't think that you know a judge saying it throws off what we already knew that Colin right. Kaepernick is out of the league because he knelt. Um, and so when I saw people getting upset, I said, you know, what, what is the, what is the outcome that you wanted to see? Right. Because in the end he was going to get paid, you know, whether or not he won this in court or whether or not he took a settlement, he was going to get money. And the only other part of this was, you know, whether or not a judge would find that he had been blackballed and put it in a judicial opinion. But if that's the goal, you know, I'm, I'm sure if that was the goal, should that have been the goal? Or is this just an employment lawsuit? This is a labor dispute. Yeah. The, the issues that Colin Kaepernick is pushing for, the you know, non-profits that he started, the money he's giving away, his activism in the community, right. that's still ongoing whether or not this suit happened or not, right. whether or not this settlement happened or not. And so I think that when people started, you know, I think they just got too invested in we need a judge to say the NFL is racist. We already know the NFL is racist. <laughs> we we know the NFL has been a trash company for years. They don't care about they don't they talk a good game about player safety, they don't care. Right. They talk a good game about domestic violence, they don't care. You know, they the they only give about ten percent you know, every 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 season when they do the breast cancer awareness month in October and everybody wears paint they, they what Goes to the NFL. Uh, <laughs> the NFL pieces. You know, the, the, the stadium deals yeah, that they do where they get the community to pay, where they get taxes to pay for the stadiums, you know, the, the, the false, you know, military patriotism that they do. Anytime they do like any kind of uh, recognition of the military, mm-hmm. you know, the flag flying ceremonies and flyovers, the Department of Defense pays for that. Mm-hmm. We're paying for that as taxpayers, but they get to put their branding on and say how much we care about the military. They're not, even, they're not even fronting the cost for that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we know the NFL has been a trash organization, but I guess part of the boycott, part of the Kaepernick settlement, what exactly are we trying to see? What's the, what's the result that we want to see from the NFL? Mm-hmm. Uh, because, again, to me, a lot of it just got kind of tied into this lawsuit of the causes Kaepernick was fighting for, and it kind of got placed on the NFL when it should be placed on those sheriffs that we elect, the police chiefs who are appointed by the city councils we elect, Mm -hmm. you know, if if we care about police brutality, that's where our our interests need to go and not towards the NFL and their labor dispute with Colin Kaepernick. So that was kind of my my point, you know, as far as why I posted (laughs) that. But, you know, that... that, Receive it that way, Antoine. I, I understand. So that's a guy. <laughs> Let me go first. I, I understood that's what he was saying. Though. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I totally understood that's what he was saying. If you guys remember all the posts, I was yeah. like, y'all have to remember, not everybody's attorney. Yeah, <laughs> I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, I, I, totally, I, totally, I totally understood what he was saying. So, Antoine, okay. Well, you know, I, 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 I,
I'll, I'll give you a chance to weigh in on it, and then we'll go to Kevin because Kevin gonna smash me about. Oh no! Because I'm a see, oh, season one. I mean, opener. I may be in Charlotte watching the Panthers play. So. Right, you say that now. Wait till I talk. I know. <laughs> I ain't gonna post about it because you will not be coming for me on Facebook. No, I don't. <laughs> to me, the, the I, I sort of agree with him. The, the lawsuit. Anytime you file a lawsuit, it's about money. And in my opinion, the lawsuit was about his money and what he believed he was owed because of collusion. Anybody that got it twisted as far as what the purpose of that lawsuit was, that was about money, was just dead wrong from the very beginning. The other issues are the other issues. So to me, they were completely separate. He was mm-hmm. blackballed. He was cost mm-hmm. years of salary. Right. Could he prove it? The NFL had their reasons to settle it. Right. They had their reasons. <laughs> <laughs> they paid him more money on top of it right. to sign the non-disclosure agreement. Right. That is customary. Right. But that's his money. Because right. realistically, you know, he's been without the NFL salary for what, two, three years? Right. He's still been given to the causes. So he, to me, that's his money. Mm-hmm. Beyond that are the issues that he decided to kneel for. Facts. If we're mad at him because he settled his lawsuit, to me that means we weren't really down with him in the first place. Mm-hmm. If you were to, if he becomes a sellout to you only because he settled that lawsuit, mm-hmm. and you know that he's basically been giving to these causes mm-hmm. the entire time, mm-hmm. and that and, and him getting his money makes him a sellout, that means you didn't really care about Colin Kaepernick in the first place. Mm-hmm. And I have a problem with that. You know what I mean? My issue with the NFL, I was teetering on extreme dislike for the NFL before the Colin Kaepernick thing even happened. Mm. Because to me, you had Ray Weiss basically beat down a woman, he gets videoed. Mm-hmm. He doesn't get suspended until the video comes out. Oh, I was like, they never do anything until the video comes out. <laughs> right. Once the video comes out, that's where they... <laughs> <laughs> no, they, sus- they suspend players left and right for weed, like it's nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But he basically loses his career after the fact. I can't. I can't understand the suspensions year long well, for weed. Well, I the beat down though. <coughs> that's what they, they suspend players for weed who are using it as pain treatment. Right. At the same time, they're hiding evidence as far as the CTE loss. Right. Mm-hmm. So I mean, like they they don't care about player safety. Right. Like they 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 give good lip service to it. But. I am from the south. I grew up a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. Ooh. I love that's sports and football. <laughs> you know, I, I just do. Yeah. If I could have played, you know, I would have played. But I got to the point where I didn't grow, so I can't keep playing. <laughs> that, that's okay. I, I was always undersized. I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't make weight. <laughs> but see, now, you know, I'm not sure what the FCC guidelines are, Chuck. <laughs> but you got Robert Kraft mm-hmm. at a jack mm-hmm. shack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you say jack shack. <laughs> <laughs> you say jack shack. I, I cut my eye. Yeah. And nothing happened. Essentially, we're going to wait for the legal process to, 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 to bear out. Mm-hmm. You have Cowboy players still getting suspended left and right. Mm-hmm. But we're going to point at this guy and make him the face of everything that's wrong with America. America. <laughs> mm-hmm. But Robert Kraft is okay. My thing is this. If you love football that much, fine. You know what I mean? But it goes back to what you and I were talking about before. What is your degree? What is your level of sacrifice? Mm-hmm. Um, I would get into it with some of my Facebook friends. I'm doing their face all the time, but you're still watching the NFL. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're still watching the NFL. Mm-hmm. So, and I would sort of pick at them jokingly a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't want you to, to criticize this person, this person, this person so strong, but you can't turn the TV off on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. That was probably a little bit too much that I look at it. In hindsight, because I'm then not giving them credit for all the other stuff they were doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I can't. Then I'm basically saying, but what you did on Saturday afternoon wasn't enough mm-hmm. because you got to prove to me how down you are by not watching the NFL, and that's probably not fair. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, a because, because, <laughs> because to me, to a certain degree, now whether you agree with him kneeling or standing, that debate. It's never going to end because it depends on what perspective you come from. But at least he was willing to 
go there. And at some level, if you're not even willing to turn the TV off, mm -hmm. I got a problem with that. Mm -hmm. Because then don't crit criticize me about anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> whether I'm going to watch now or not, I think it's just a personal decision now. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because at this point in time, I thought about it. I think, well, shoot, Antoine, you don't watch the game, but you know, you do this and the NFL gets money. Yeah. You do you that. Fantasy NFL football. Gets money. You do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, it's yeah. almost like it's so ingrained in society now that there's no way to keep the money from them. <laughs> well, so say, the, unless you come up with your own league, I mean, there, there, there's. Ding, a ding, ding, <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Unless you come up with your own Because to me, you know, I was very happy that the Panthers re signed the safety. Yeah, Eric Reed. Eric Reed. Yeah. But part of the thing, but you know what, man? The league is 80% African American. Right. What happens if, you know, the players just don't all one second say, you know, I'm not going to play? You know what happens. It shuts it down. It, it becomes, and it becomes ours. That's the ultimate answer is how much sacrifice can you really get in 2019? Which is why I asked that question. Mm -hmm. Because it's one thing to, 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 Get together during Black History Month mm -hmm. and have these. This Black History Month is a terrible yeah. problem. <laughs> 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 Jesse Smoke, right? Yeah. 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 She's handing out cotton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's easy to talk about these things, and you know that part. It was easy for to get my kid to get up there on MOK program and get, do her three lines and sit down. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna clap. Well, let me ask you just in the midst of why you're talking about that MLK. Is it easy oh, because he died? Okay. It's easy because I don't have to die. Oh, stand by. Or is it easy because he was accepted? Yeah, well, no. Hold, hold, hold. Yeah, time out. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got it. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're tuning in to WRSV Elm City, uh, Choice FM 92.1. Now, continue, please. <laughs> well, he was accepted after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. After, they, after they took him, rewrapped it, and presented it back to him. To a certain degree, because I got to a big <laughs> one, my fight, uh, about, with one of my Facebook friends about you know, he basically would cherry pick certain lines from MLK. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, 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 nobody does a full speech. Right. Yeah, nobody yeah. does a full speech. You know, which, I, which caused right. him to get blown away in the first place. That's right. Well, and I mean, if you look at, you know, and I, I, in positive, I, I'm, I always look at the polling. And when you look at the polling, you know, Gallup has polls on, you know, how people, people felt about MLK, how they felt about, you know, the civil rights movement. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the poll. Jesus. <laughs> He's a saint now. I mean, Martin Luther King was about as unpopular as Colin Kaepernick is now. Like, yes. I mean, when people are, what you're, you, know, you had about 40% of people say, I have a, a positive opinion of Martin Luther King when he was alive. Right. Now, after he was killed, now it's about a 99%. You can't find right. so many people who come out and say anything negative right. about it. How about it, black people <laughs> feeling a certain way about MLK? And I mean, even if black people, like, you, to, today, we want to have this idea that all black people support Supported MLK. No, that wasn't. That that was not false. even all civil rights activists no. uh, support MLK. That's Thurgood right. Marshall, MLK, they didn't agree. Right. <laughs> they didn't, they exactly. didn't agree. That's right. That's right. That's right. But Correct. you know, and, and so you know, a lot of times, as you said, we kind of we have this tendency to kind of sanctify and pacify mm -hmm. and rewrap our heroes as if they did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And I mean, MLK did some things wrong. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he did. Right. But nobody wants to say that now because he's got a 99% approval rating. Mm -hmm. And if you say anything negative about him, you know, mm -hmm. you get a certain type of reaction. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. And you get a certain kind of reaction. <laughs> That's right. But, and we prefer positivity over truth. We we always avoid the dirty yeah, and I think that's that's another issue that we try when we look back we have, we avoid that nasty truth of what happened. That's right. Here's the thing though, back to your point. Yes, sir. Can we <clears throat> really expect all the NFLs to boycott and we can't even turn the TV off? <laughs> Go ahead and hit us with it because I know you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, well, let me let me I, say, I, if, as the NFL player, why would I boycott? Mm -hmm. And I'm making a million dollars a year if you can't turn the TV off because you go watch anyway, right? 
Or let me get you excited remember, uh, little bit because I know you, I know you coming. And this other argument that people hit me with, yeah. well, you know, the little guy that's you know making money parking, and the guy yeah. who's you know um, selling sodas at the state. You know, when you boycotting, you heard those. I'm like, well, I'm boycotting in my house. I ain't buying a drink or paying for parking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, hey, I ain't nowhere close to the state, so how am I hurting him? But okay, go ahead, my brother. I, I'm going to embrace myself. Go ahead. Just, well, you guys remember what I was saying earlier about how. Pro anything is sacrificing. Mm -hmm. Pro anything is doing what's better for the collective, even if it's against your own personal desires. Would you agree that it would be better for the collective if all of us did boycott the NFL during the entire Kaepernick thing prior to us learning? Absolutely. Well, not just boycott the NFL, but boycott the sponsors. Now, that's where the money comes from. Right. That is. Right. So. Bobby Jones is. was easy for us to give that up. Is. That was very <laughs> funny. But listen, <laughs> but, but, not getting billed a whole bunch of money. <laughs> but, but this is how, but this is what I'm saying. Would, would it have been that? Would it have been that's just one yeah. part. That's just one part that's of one, it. Yeah. That's just one part of it. Um I don't think Colin Kaepernick is a sellout, me personally. No. I wouldn't call him a sellout. I wouldn't say that he's a sellout at all. I believe that it it First, rely. It first is on what you invested into the entire thing. If you didn't jump on because of him protesting and jumped on because of the lawsuit, then you're going to get what you expect. However, the entire situation is indicative to what black folks have been suffering from for thousands of years, but even just of recently in our lifetime. Even just, a re even, even just a recently, in the past few years, we've had Dove, H&M, NFL, Gucci, Prada, Starbucks, every other week. And let me say this by one. Let me say this first of all. <laughs> I don't boycott. I hate the term boycott. I hate boycotting with a passion. Because boycotting means hold your breath until you get what you want. And white folks have found out black folks are forgetful. So all I have to do, all I have to do is wait you out. And you will be right back in Starbucks. Now, y'all remember we went right back in Starbucks and then he came out with the colorblind statement. Yeah, yeah. We get fooled like this every single time. Well, I do want to say... He, he no longer owns Starbucks. He just... Yeah, he tried to run for president. So let me... Okay. He, he, no, he no longer owns Starbucks. Let me ask you this. Do you think he still makes money from Starbucks? Yeah, he's got a bunch of stock. That's where so he's are we about? So are we about employment or finance? I'm going to say finance. Right. So we don't care. It doesn't matter if he works for Starbucks if those shares from racist Starbucks is still going to his pocket. Right. Can we agree on that? Amen, my brother. Okay. So what I'm saying is as brother was saying earlier, when Colin Kaepernick sat down in that white space talking about racism, he knew what it was. He knew what it was. Better than we did. Yes, sir. It is, and, and, and all of us can also verify that it is not new for our celebrities to stand up for black folks. Since Ray Charles, since Sam Cooke, since, so this is oh, nothing new. Easy. This yeah, is easy. why Trump and other white individuals, they, we're the only folks that they go to the celebrities to find out what's happening. Mm -hmm. We're the only ones. Don't nobody go get Tom Cruise. Let's see what the hell Tom Cruise. Ain't nobody, exactly winning, ain't nobody going to get Jackie Chan. See what exactly the, don't nobody go get them. But when it comes to us, we go get Steve Harvey, Kanye West. Well, we go get all of our celebrities. We well, train them, though. Let's so go figure out what John ja Rule talking about. Right. Let's see what John ja Rule <laughs> thinks about that. Let's see what John. Ja, I want to know what John ja Rule thinks about that. Okay. So we're the only ones. But this is nothing new. So Colin Kaepernick, when you make these decisions, I'm assuming you know what's happening. You know what the business is. And then the reality is, he just got retrograde pay. He didn't get a he didn't get no upgrade or no money. Uh, I'm sorry, I think he probably he probably wouldn't have made fifty million dollars in two years. He would have. You think so? No. No contract. No. Not no. from just that contract. But you're trying no, to tell other you trying to tell me him still playing an endorsements and him playing in the NFL, he'd have made he wouldn't have made fifty million dollars. With both he nah, I don't think so. With everything. I think all right, his, all right. <laughs> all right, are you still well, you know what? But I'm, I'm, I'll sacrifice that because reality, you probably would know better than I because I hadn't watched football since a child. 
So you would, yeah. I, I can get, you probably would know, you know, better than I would what he would make. But I'm just saying, I know with him doing this movement and everybody jumping on it around the world, he could have made $50 million, $49 million. Okay. Another thing is, and I love the way he put, um, uh, Brother Marshall put, um, it was a labor issue. Because it put mine into perspective that it is a job. It put my argument into perspective. It's a job. And money should not outweigh truth. You would never go back to work for Walmart if they disrespected you and your race like that. You would never go back to Hardee's if you tried to stand up for something black and they told you shut up. I wouldn't go back to Hardy's, but I would go back but, to Hardy's. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so, so this that is what I'm was. saying. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> like I said earlier, that dollar amount sets your tone for telling the truth. Right. That's not correct. That's a flaw in our society as black individuals because all they have to do is pay you off. Regardless of the the the, the what you know to be true, we're talking about what our people go off of and survive off of is media and propaganda. This is what your people survive off of. Right. He knows this and recognizes this. This is fact. And we know he gives a lot to charity, but y'all, let's please not act like he's not pushing Bentleys and owning seven homes and doing... Please let's not act like this brother is panhandling out front of Walmart for food. Okay? <laughs> let's not act like this, okay? Right. Let's not act like and, and I was reading an article about this whole situation in the New York Post with Nike and how Ka uh, Kaepernick was, had always been signed to Nike. Yeah. Oh, they were waiting. They were waiting for it. Yeah. They were going to cut him. Yep. They were going to get rid of him. But they thought that it was a wise business. And this is what the employees at Nike say. Yep. It was a business decision. Black folks think they care. <laughs> we do. We think they care. So what we do is go out again and give all our money to Nike. Oh, why we bought the whole store? <laughs> you see? You see? And now what do we have? The memory of it. But what does Nike have? Money. Yep. But they were getting that money anyway, were they not? They want we this is look, y'all heard they close. You know they close. Sales, Come on. Sales went up, Come on, you know they sales went up like 31%. All right. That's all about keto wearing. All right. So, <laughs> in between 2017 and 2018, it's safe to say the black folks in the nation gave away on just three things. We gave away over a billion dollars, mm -hmm. and at the same time, we're marching for employment. Oh, yeah. We're marching for food, for housing, healthcare, healthcare, for education, <laughs> healthcare. We're, we're doing this, we're doing, I looked at, and I, and I love Brother T.I., I looked at his, his, his little boycott call for Gucci, and he said boycott him for three months. <laughs> he said he spent seven figures, a man that owns his own clothing line, a black clothing line, spent seven figures at Gucci last year. So, since y'all are going to disrespect us, everybody boycott them for three months. I see, I'll say, my problem with, you know, some of the boycotts to, you know, I don't shop at Gucci. So exactly. I'm like, but see, I'm already I'm already I'm saying, but this is what I'm saying. Do you think? Do you think that? Do you think that the owner of Gucci is is more likely to feel the way that you and I feel, or feel, or are they going to be the owner? Of, no, 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 no. Let me just one saying. Do you think that the owner of a small, a white owner of a small clothing company? Is going to feel the same as that Gucci owner, or be more likely inclined to be and feel and vote and and live like you do? I'm sorry, is that question for me? Whose culture do you think even the smallest, even if it's not Gucci, even if it's what you have on now, even if it's anything I have on now? What I'm trying to point out is that it's not the price of the clothing; it's the mentality of the owners. Yeah. All right. It's not the price of the clothing that makes them racist. That makes them insensitive to the black struggle. It's the owners. Yeah. And we keep running into this problem in America every single day in every walk of life from sports to clothing to restaurants to politics. They are constantly showing you and trying to put you in your place and we give them more money for it. That's 
Thirteen. But there's one bright spot in there because it, what was the um the sporting goods store? Oh, that said, oh in Colorado. Yeah. Um, <laughs> now you go support Cabinet. We're not selling none of his stuff. Well, then they got to business. That, business. <laughs> that <laughs> doesn't. Is. White folks losing business has no effect on us at all. It wasn't. It wasn't because of us. I that was his. Was. No, well, it was his decision. No. Like, yeah, by yeah that was his stupidity. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't that wasn't us uniting. <laughs> that wasn't us uniting and putting him out of business. That's and he's a racist. Right. But that wasn't us uniting. But it was his racism and the stupidity of his racism <laughs> that put him in that situation. He's just right. talking about his money. Like, you see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so it's not like so. Like I said, I don't believe Colin, Colin Kaepernick is a sellout. However, I believe he did not, and I can't say he didn't follow through because I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know <laughs> if he's going to continue kneeling if he goes back to the NFL or to a team. I don't know what he plans on doing, but I do know that he should be aware of imagery, and imagery is what controls, and he wasn't aware of imagery. And he's been silent. Well, regarding the NFL lawsuit, he's got to be silent. Yeah. That, that's the, <laughs> that's the <laughs> not supposed to be. Like, Beforehand, when he came out and posted that last video after y'all found out he was a spokesperson of Nike, y'all done heard nothing from him. Have you? Let me check his Twitter feed. Please do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that purposeful? Of course. Why? Because I believe Nike and him in the NFL had it going on the whole time. NFL like, too? Think, yeah. So you think it's I believe him and Nike had something going on the whole time. But Nike was working out the Nike, same deal with the Nike NFL. Nike had something going on the right. whole time. I believe all three of them had something going on. It's like, yo, I got to say, y'all know, look. Y'all see, did y'all see what Dapper Dan said with Gucci? Mm. I can't lose my job. Mm. I can't lose my job. And y'all talking just because y'all ain't buying and y'all ain't going to support me no way. If I if I was the boycott and say I'm walking out of here. so. And this is the situation we're always put in. But Colin Kaepernick guarantee you he could have made he could have made that fifty thousand without having to go back to work fifty million without having to go back to work for his oppressors, and I'm not I can't be convinced any other way that one and that's back pay. <laughs> and then and then this, <laughs> hold on, hold on. So you you're telling me there was no other way Colin Kaepernick could have made fifty million dollars. If there was a way, I'd be doing it. But <laughs> you're, not, you're not an NFL player, I, I'm not an NFL and player. you don't have a million dollars to start. Uh, I, and you don't you don't have a million you don't have fifty million people knowing your face. I I don't see another way of him making that kind of money in two years. I just, I, just, I didn't say in two years. Well, I mean that's I'm not talking about in two years. Do you think that he could make fifty million dollars if he would have if he would have continued the lawsuit, no settlement, took it to court? Oh, he would have got crazy paid in court. If you mean to tell me that you don't settled? think Colin Kaepernick, who started a movement, no, no, could have made fifty million dollars no. from who? over these next few years? The from reason who? why I say that, please, is because it would require us to stay. Y'all know he got a book deal. No, I'm saying, do you know he has a book deal? I'm sure he does. That, that book deal won't we get $50 million. million. <laughs> that, his, his book, he won't, get 50, he won't get $50 million from? The reason why I say that no. is this. It's because from his book and all these became, other things he's doing? He, I don't he think became so. a no. sellout so fast. And to me, it would require a... He sold sellout. out? You Not say he a sellout? Oh, okay. But I didn't he, hear he he say. He would sell out so fast to some people. Isn't there another league that he's playing for that wanted to give him $20 million? He has for $20 million? Yes. That was the the AF. Right. Yeah, but that's still on the table, right? No, they they they, they can't have it. They they couldn't pay him. I mean, the owner the owner. Of the but that's AM, what. But what I'm saying is that's twenty million of that fifty he no, could made, right? He wouldn't have made twenty. They, he, they he asked for twenty. They couldn't afford twenty. Mm. I think. And, that way, and I'm sorry. Let me point out that the AAF they are there's a North Carolina businessman who is um a part. of I think he's a Carolina Hurricanes owner. Okay. Yeah. And they couldn't make payroll. Like he had to step in and pay out of his pocket to make payroll for that league. So he won't make it. He won't make it. Didn't Ice Cube? He would be paying him. Didn't Ice Cube and LL Cool J just do a billion dollar deal with that basketball thing? The big three. Yeah. The big three. Yeah. They just did a billion dollar deal. They have nothing to do with basketball. Oh, and you're telling me Colin Kaepernick can't make any move to get fifty million dollars? I don't think so. Oh my god! I, I think he I could, think so. but it so it two individuals who have nothing to do with basketball can make a billion dollar deal. But Colin Kaepernick, who started a movement for the world, can't make fifty million dollars. No, he he should be able to. I don't. My see question how. is: What's prohibiting him? 
I don't see us. No, I don't see. Why, we're the only ones that's gonna give no, him no, money. No, no. I don't understand. Like us as a collective group who would have to stick by him for ten years, and he became a sellout so fast by settling this lawsuit. It makes me wonder. For the for the same reason that we're gonna book boycott Gucci for three months. I don't see anybody paying him that kind of money. I mean, you you talked about you know the deal with Nike and like you know and, and him pushing stuff stuff with Nike. That's all I, I don't I don't see him making fifty million dollars off of any of it. I mean, you talk about a book deal. I mean, they gave the Obamas what a five hundred dollars a five hundred thousand dollar book advance. If we give an Obama five hundred thousand, what we give to Hank Kaepernick? He ain't making he ain't making, he ain't making that much. I just saw a sister <laughs> online who made a million dollars. Health and beauty products. Yeah, I did see that twice. Yeah. This is her second time doing it. Yeah, I saw that. But, but Kaepernick ain't in that. <laughs> so you mean to tell me? <laughs> so you guys, because y'all know this is not eight nineteen eighty four anymore. So fifty million dollars really isn't much in that crowd. I understand. I still All see right. my pain. So you 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 seriously thinking that with Colin Kaepernick's influence and the people that do support him, he won't make fifty million dollars. Nope. Are they are they supporting him though? I say no. I just don't. That's see my it. thing. He <laughs> I became don't a sellout it. so fast to a. Uh, aren't you supporting him? I am supporting him. Aren't you supporting him? I'm supporting, but, but I'm watching in the fall. Hold on, hold on. Let me say this. Let me say this. And then he may be coming to the Panthers. I may be watching him. In let me say this. I support him. I ain't bought nothing Nike in the past year, though. <laughs> I, mean, I know, but I'm talking about that. I know, Nike. but see, that's not I mean, I mean, for you. You right Nike. Like, I just, it, it's just not. It's what not, did Nike part, pay? It's not part of my. It's not part of my budget. Like it's mm-hmm. not. Not you know. You talked about making it part of your budget. Yeah. If it's not part of my budget, I mean, like I support you. It don't even matter. Yeah. But you know, my money's still. What did Nike pay him to be, become the face? Was it a continuation of his contract? Or it was a continuation of his contract. So it was no extra. No. Let me tell you crazy. something. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I would have done my own thing so fast before I, I humbled myself in this retro pay and then went back to the NFL. And that's because of the movement and I knew what I stepped out on and I knew what it was going to be. If it was any, and, and I just ran into, I just, I just went last, uh, her name was, uh, she's from Rowan County. Uh, her name was Chantel. I can't remember her last name, but this sister, because of gun violence, she was from Chicago and her brother was murdered. And because of the gun violence, she, you know, got bitter towards the government, you know, for the the, the role they play in, in, in you know, turning yep. up the black mind. And so um, she gave up everything, her job and everything. And uh, she was making some good money. All right. She wasn't making Kaepernick money. So I'm not going to say she was making <laughs> Kaepernick money. So it was probably an easy decision for her. But I'm talking about the gumption. She gave up everything and moved to a farm and literally started farming all over again. Oh, so Food. I mean, I'm talking about meat. She grow. She she breeds her own chickens, her own pigs. You know everything, and and she you know does everything to to say against racism. But see, this is my well, point. And let, let, let me tell you real quick and say this. Getting back to the original point of this conversation, you know, you had to struggle in our community for people to even give up watching right. the NFL. That's a fact. So, so so if you say that to Kaepernick, okay. Don't go back to the league. Don't take the money to do whatever. Go start your own league. I mean, yeah. he would have had to struggle to get people to even support. That's why they call it the struggle, y'all. Watching. They wouldn't even stop watching. Y'all, that's why I call And I know what y'all are saying. Trust me. <laughs> I know what y'all are saying. But that's why they call it the struggle. So before you make that decision, you got to make the decision off what you're doing to go to bed at night for you. Not if folks are going to support you. Folks are not that we're not we're we're not trained to support each other. So then, like how that. does he how does he start his own league and survive and make fifty million over however many years? He, even if he doesn't start his own league, I'm just saying he make fifty million dollars some way. But how? But he, people wouldn't even just stop watching TV. But some people did stop watching yeah, TV I, to the point to yeah. the point to the point that didn't the NFL admit that they took some losses? The Super Bowl. They right. It was terrible. So he. <laughs> They admit they took losses because of the counter protest. I don't think it's they almost did. like they ignored the fact that the original protest came right. from outside. But what do we know to be true? I think I it was a mixture. I all right, so even if it, so, even it with a mixture. Yeah, I think it was so, a mixture. all right, so let me ask you this: Do you think that because I hear this a lot with black businesses, there's no black Walmart, so what I'm supposed to do? If there was an option, do you think that would at least get five, ten percent of NFL watches to switch? 
Well, we'll see that now with the AFL. Do y'all remember Vince? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Do y'all remember Vince McMahon? Yes. Yes. Do y'all remember he started the XFL? Yep. That is it, it failed miserably. It failed miserably. <laughs> it failed miserably. Right. However, did he do it? Yeah. He did. And now his wife is over minority. I mean, over uh, small, small businesses, businesses. Yes. in the Trump administration. Right. <laughs> y'all, I'm telling you, he could have done something to supplement an income for him. Would it be 50? Would it be 39? Would it be 20? But I'm just I'm just saying for him to know what he was stepping into, for him to know what he was stepping into, I can't personally feel responsible or take responsibility for what his bills and things are lacking in. So let's switch up and ask you this question because that now his stuff has been several. He may or may not play again. Mm -hmm. But you know, you and I have this thing about now I'm going to watch because he got his money, his situation is over, mm -hmm. and your thing is that people mm -hmm. should still not watch. Yeah, what I'm not going. I'm not going to watch because the NFL basically says screw you, black folks. Yeah. That's well, the end of the day. The <clears throat> NFL says screw you, black folks, and when you say that, you don't you don't change your mind I'm, after that. You don't say, oh, I was wrong. Black folks are good. I, you don't you don't say that. I mean, I'm, what I would say is it depends on what you are uh, boycotting for in the first place. And, you know, what, and I, I guess it goes back, you, if you think that I'm boycotting because the NFL has shown that they don't care about the issues that black people are going through, mm -hmm. this settlement hasn't proven that. I mean, it hasn't stopped that. They still don't care. Right. <laughs> but, you know. That's why I did, that's why I don't support. And like that, they, there, are, there are a number of reasons to boycott the NFL. Like that. I've laid into, you know, like I said, the, the, the information they give out about breast cancer awareness, you know, the patriotism, the stadium deals, the, the player safety. I mean, there's a number of domestic violence. I mean, there's a number of reasons, uh, you know, I, I curse. And, and if somebody and, and I and I wouldn't blame any woman or man even that say, man, I'm, they got too many wife beaters. Mm hmm. I'm not watching the NFL no more because they're not showing accountability to their players for being wise, and I'm going to stop watching. I will support them with that, too. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be interesting to see what you brought up, the, the uh, Robert Kraft situation and how all that <laughs> ends up shaping up, you know, at the end of the day where they, you know, because somebody may ask. They need to whole, force him to sell just like they made Yeah, that's, that's exactly what I was mm -hmm. going to say. Yeah, it's going to be the same like the Clippers on there and they force him to sell, but I don't see mm -hmm. that happening at all. But, um, Wasn't Kaepernick supposed to go to one of those teams when he was supposed to go to that team? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is. is. That's what I'm saying. First, is that I've seen a lot of jokes about Robert Kraft and him going to this. Nah. Well, yeah. But I'll say the, the thing that we're ignoring the fact that they were human trafficking yeah, women from fact. China. Like, yep. they that's were not fact. allowed to leave the shop. They were forced to live there. They didn't speak the language. Like, that was. They, exactly. Yeah, he knew what that was. And I mean, that, that to me, that's the bigger problem other than this billionaire, you know. Yeah. And I will say that I do believe that some, you know, sex work should be legal because it just oh, makes Lord. a lot safer for everybody. Oh. You know, come on. Here's the thing: if you regulate it, it, it becomes safe for the people who do it. Right. You're not going to stop it because it's going on anyways. Right. And so, I mean, what, what's the point of trying to force, by forcing it on the ground, you're making it more dangerous for no, people to participate? No, 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 and, <laughs> and so, like I said, I think that oh, it should be legal. <laughs> no, if, my if, no. Someone, <laughs> if someone no. chooses to go into that business, we need to make it as safe as possible. Let possible. me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did your, did your parents talk to you about not having sex before, you know, premarital sex? No. They didn't tell you anything about that? Who is anybody? Parents talking about well, premarital? Yeah. Everybody, we're, we're, old, we're old. That's why we old. Yeah. <laughs> we old. All right. They 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 knew what you was doing anyway, though, right? Probably. Yeah. But they still they still said it, right? Right. And 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 your parents' voice becomes your voice of reason in your head when you grow up, right? Right. Right. But just because you can't stop it, don't mean you condone it. Well, he's saying he's saying he it's safer, though, right? It, it is. I mean, well, you he said you're not gonna stop it anyway, so let's well, just you, make it. You aren't gonna. Stop you're not. The money. You're, you're the, the point. The, the point the is money not that to was, stop it. The money. But that you was, got to hold fast in your stance if you if you don't support it. I don't support it, but I'm not gonna say. Here's the thing. I, there are a lot of things I don't support that should be legal. I mean, I, and I think that's what we get into. The, you know, just because I don't support it doesn't sex. mean that it should be illegal. I don't and, support cocaine. But do I think it should be legal and regulated here because of protecting people's lives who do yeah. regulate it, sell it? I don't snort. <laughs> <laughs> I don't snort. <laughs> I don't. 
I don't smoke weed. I, I, don't, I, do not. I, 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 I don't. I don't. I don't smoke weed. Smoking, smoking, I, I smoking <laughs> weed is totally different than smoking a cooked up, oil-based, poisonous <laughs> substance well, that was dropped in your community intentionally to kill smoke, you. I don't smoke cigarettes, don't do but they are regulated. And taxed because there are people who. Do so you're equivalating cigarettes to dabbling in the flesh trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't walk out. Don't walk out. I was like, I don't see. You got 30 minutes to go. Don't walk out. I was like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out. I shouldn't even be on the mic. <laughs> from, from a safety standpoint, you can limit how STDs are spread if you force the people who engage in that. If, if they, they have to what about rape successful. culture and. You would curb it. I said, you, you would curb, curb it. Yes. So women wouldn't get raped if it was legal to sell. No, 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 no. I'm not understanding. I, don't, I didn't say issue. stop. I said curb. Hold on. Okay, so yes, less it. women would get raped yes. if you could pay for sex. Here's, yeah. the, here's the issue. Is yeah. that you have people yeah. who are underground So now. rapists would be like, well, I'm not going to rape her. I'm going to pay for it now. Hold on. Yes. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> let, let me jump into the policy yes. aspect of this. <laughs> Please tell her. Wait a minute. Please tell her. Thank you. Am I, is this let, serious? Let me jump into the policy yeah. aspect of this. Women who engage in that practice underground, they are at higher rates of, of being raped. And the reason that they don't come forward is because they're engaged in illegal activity. They're not going to come forward and talk to the police. Because if she's a dirty little girl, according it's, it's, to the police department. It's like, a drug dealer, it's like a drug dealer being robbed. A drug dealer who gets robbed by another drug dealer is not going to go to the police and be like, hey, they stole my cocaine money. They like, do. They, 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 they do. That's not true. That's yeah, not true. I've known yeah. several drug dealers. Yeah. 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 I've known drug dealers go to have the paperwork to get their money back. They're, they're less likely to do so. Yeah. If you are able to regulate this, if you are able to make, then number one, you don't get human traffickers. Mm -hmm. Because you've got to license these individuals. You force them to get tested oh so you don't spread out around STDs. Oh those, those women who are victims of, the, of violence, they're more likely to come forward and seek legal action against the people who do the violence against them. So I, I, don't, I don't think the Pope gets it over here. <laughs> I mean, you know, I say, as a, from a cultural standpoint. Because I was always taught that rape is a sickness. It is, but you... So I don't think paying for it is is going to prohibit? It's, that would be it's, an agreement. It's not necessarily prohibiting it, but it allows the victims to come forward and seek help. <laughs> I don't. I mean, as far as the as far as the I'm I'm feeling vulnerable. <laughs> Look, me, nobody's pulling dollars out. So you I just don't understand. <laughs> to, to me, the Eric, come pick him up. Make sure you say the thought of le legalizing the sex trade. Oh. Is is dangerous only to oh the extent that the people who are turned on by it, to some degree, are turned on by the illegality of it. So it's what I would say is potentially you can legalize certain things, but if you're interested in the 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 dangerous illegal illegal part of it, if that's what turns you on, then you're gonna push the envelope to something else. So. The, the Robert mm. Kraft type it's behavior deep. is not going to be what you're into. It's then going to be, no, I'm into the bag over the head type thing and abducting the people. Mm. Because really what you're into is the deceitfulness of it. It's the like, demeaning of a, of a particular person. This mm. person is beneath me. I'm only interested in them. I'm going to pay you to do it. You're going to do exactly what I want you to do. And you're beneath me. But how about the young women who were locked away in that shop who didn't speak the language and couldn't leave the room? Right. The legality would actually help them. Help them. It would yes, not. It let me it tell y'all something about when you dabble in this fresh trade, and I don't know not if y'all what, what y'all know about pimping, all right? Let me tell y'all about pimping. You tell anything you get in your head, bust. Legalities is not going to make them come forward with it, saying they've been raped or anything like that anymore. Like Huh? It, it will shine a light on the pimps. Do we it, need more it, light shined on pimps? Well, Does everybody in America not know about the existence of pimps? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it reduces yeah. the necessity of a pimp. Because, I mean, the pimp... Yeah. <laughs> How? It, it would, because, because, again... It, it may would, reduce the necessity of that pimp that stands on the street with a big hat and a Cadillac, but <laughs> she's bringing that money to somebody. It would, right. it would help no, women she, as much as the back she, she did would, to, to avoid violence from... People were murdered from Backpage and Craigslist, and I don't understand. Well, because they were again, they were engaged because, because of so, because so you're saying they were so you're saying they're only murdered and raped because it's not legal. 
No, 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 no. no, no. no. You're because no. sixth grade you, is not legal. You, you're, you're speaking talk, in absolutes. You, we're speaking in percentages. You you talk about Her people becoming entrepreneurs. Don't do that. She gets to own her own career. Right? <laughs> we see. I mean, that's the thing. She if if All we right. if we require a license, <laughs> All right. you, you pay taxes on it. Mm-hmm. You get tested mm-hmm. again. All we right. we limit the risk of STDs. Women who are victims, who are stolen from, who are beaten, who are mm-hmm. you know require right. protections from pimps, but, they're more likely to come forward and say, "I'm a victim of a crime." But I All think right. when you say she gets to. Gain control of her career. That's assuming that that's a voluntary choice, mm. and that's what I'm saying. Is that if you legalize it, you make it more of a voluntary choice. It becomes I, a voluntary. See, let's, let's look at Amsterdam. because because yeah, if you if use you, Amsterdam as a, an example, I imagine you read up on. Yeah, I mean, you if you look at foreign countries who do that, there you you look at the women who engage in that. It is a voluntary thing. We don't have to human traffic people. It was the, is it a voluntary thing or is it because they feel they have no other options or choice and you sort of got the you know I know that's a lot of, like a geisha thing. But well, it, it, I was like working at Walmart for a lot of people that is not a voluntary. Yeah, thing. They, do it not a <laughs> they, they do it because it's the job. And then I guess, and then, and then I, guess I'm, I guess I'm I'm, I'm biased with the situation. <laughs> I just, I think it's, 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 it's a I dangerous, think, slippery slope. I really do. And I think it brings into play a lot of other things that we just are not prepared for. It will, but this system isn't working. No, the, the, this system's know, not working at all. The system's I'm, not working, not because, because of the system, there, but because, because who there was is created no by and who was char- and because who's there, in charge there of it. Is, there is no system. You know, oh. I'm, I'm speaking about you know, my hometown where mm-hmm. it was being reported that men were driving around and snatching girls. Mm-hmm. Putting them in a van and going. Indeed, brother. That does not work. Mm-hmm. So, so if this isn't working, we need to look at some other way of protecting women and children's bodies from people who do not care about them. I'm out again. And, I'm sorry, sorry. Perfect, perfect example would be if you look at what we did with alcohol. When we did prohibition with alcohol, it got a lot more violent. You know, you had the Al Capones running through the streets killing people, making alcohol. When we legalize it again, how many how many moonshiners do you see being shot and killed now? Like, you know, when you think about it, I mean, I think you do the same thing there. We have a we have a system that is fed by violence, it's fed by intimidation, it is fed by human trafficking. If you if you were to put the proper policy in place and legalize it, you get less of that. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, this means that everybody... I, as a black no. man, I can't be... Predator. I no, and I, as a black man, I can't be about selling well, flesh because my, my folks were sold. Well, well, and then it, my well, folks were sold. Yeah. My, my folks were sold. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-uh. I, not, not, and not, I, nah, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm have, saying. You have a job, you have a service, you sell yourself every day. Nah, that's totally different. That's totally different from my <laughs> service than letting somebody violate my body. That's totally different. Dabbling in the flesh trade is totally different from alcohol. It's totally because it's, it's you What's have the to difference. Human life. So you so, would prefer the third it part. stay as it is now. The third part. So what? You would, you would prefer that everything stay as it is right now. Well, well no, just because I don't agree with what you're saying doesn't mean I, that the only, that's the only option. What, what is, you guys what are saying is not the only option. So that does not mean that I prefer it to stay where it is. I would prefer. Give us two of I would prefer <laughs> that the community comes back and we protect and look out and have unity and watch for each other from these sick individuals that are raping. All right. I prefer that we address mental illness. I prefer that we address the issues and find that out versus selling human flesh. I'm going to throw a curveball at you. I prefer we so cut how, to the chase. So how does that stop with R. Kelly? What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, you know, it's illegal to... Well, I don't believe, I mean, I don't believe when you get into an R. Kelly, mm-hmm. you're talking about an individual that has access and ability to travel several different, st- several different states. He has access to millions of people. He has the money to support his sickness. All right? But what? But that's a good curveball because what you're saying is that we shouldn't. If we did what you guys are talking about, then what he's doing would be legal. No, 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 no not no. with the children, no. but, but with him, the women, yeah. but with the women. If he pays and, and he holding them and keep and, and and forget what it's doing to yeah. them mentally, forget what it's doing to their livelihood. Is well, y'all well, don't feel any way about selling people. No, I'm not. It's, it's not selling people. Like, I know. I know. No, if you can, if you can, if you can, donate it. If it's, it's not selling people, I mean, we're talking about the sex trade. You are selling the act. Renting people. 
You don't feel <laughs> you don't feel anything wrong with renting the, human beings. You make it sound like going in the rental center and say, "Well, I want to, you know, whatever." That's, the that's the mind, the mind of a predator like R. Kelly, is not going to be dulled at all by by changing, legal by changing law. the law. Yeah, because so R. Kelly's already doing it. Nobody's yeah. talking about changing that law. Like, I mean, we're still out here. I, I, so I don't kids. understand. But what I'm saying, what, and I think part of this is tied to people's views on sex in general. And, you know, some people, you know, as far as, you know, how people view sex in, in entirety, I mean, you talk about sex outside of marriage and, you know, people's view on that. Now, as Americans, we tend to get really deep as far as, you know, we've got to protect people. But when you look at other countries who did this, if you look at, you know, policies that you can put in place, you have a district within the city where we know this activity happens. Like if you need, if you don't want to put talk, it in Southeast Raleigh, don't put it in South. <laughs> but if you say if we set up, a red, set up if, if we set up, set up a red light district, and this is the district in your community, you can go to do this stuff. The women are licensed. You can have more police protection out there for them. They are no longer having to go underground. They they're get health they're, checks. They get health checks, so we're not spreading STDs. We, they're, they're, they are able to own their own careers because they. I saw this on the corner. Protection. I saw that on the corner. The, the TV show? Hamsterdam. That wasn't it. That was Hamsterdam. It's a dangerous... That you don't... You can't do that. The, the notion of... You can't do that. ...is blurred because she... How do we know that mm. the reason mm. why she is not engaging in this activity is not manipulated by somebody else? We how do we know, know it all now? But so I like, now it is. We already know That's what I was thinking about. The, or how do we know that she's not engaging in this activity because of what she grew up being involved in? It, it's a it's a slippery slope. You can't. And, and when I believe we're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, man, just for sexual pleasures, man. That's I just I don't. That's that. I can't do that. I, I, I get the it. sanitized nature of. You solve certain things. Yeah. Like, there's so many backstories as to how these people make the, even the conscious decision to do that, that we have to be careful because a depraved mind like R. Kelly is going to push the envelope no matter what. Well, I'm saying, so I don't have two different. And I don't think ever gonna, you're, you're never going to stop an R. Kelly you right. know, situation. So to me, we have to look at the, 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 the. Do you believe it will be pro- productive? Do you believe it will be more productive for the black race if this were legal? Would you believe that this would be a plus for the black race? Because what, what I think you get at is that you think we'll be even more victimized. I'm just asking a simple question. Do you believe that legalizing it the way you're speaking of, do you believe that it would be what, more productive for, for, for the black race where everything, because we are at war, is what we're all you know, fighting for? So do you believe that well, I don't know because in this particular situation, you had Asian women who couldn't speak the language or whatever. So the question is, True. do they bring? True. It? And but I'm just asking about here, specifically, but, exclusively I black know, folks at this so, moment right here. I'm just asking is, about black folks. I I asked about Asians. I asked about everybody else after this question. But I'm talking about right now. Can we address the black person with the with the situation and the culture that the black people are in right now, 2019? <laughs> Is it more productive for black people? Like, to, like, like braiding hair, right? <laughs> <laughs> I just cut to the chase. I mean, I, I can't answer that. You, question. Pick, you, you can't, can't. I can't. Answer you can that support question. the cause, but you can't answer that question because I, I I can't answer that question because I don't know. Okay. But what I will say is that well, when, that's an answer. When, I don't know when, what's an answer. when you look, when you look at it historically. And you know, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna get pretty. When you look at history, <laughs> mm-hmm. back in the whole frontier town, the, you know, the wild wild west, mm-hmm. you had legalized prostitution. Of course, you had women who basically became entrepreneurs. Of course, through that system, mm-hmm. you had women taking care of other women through that system. And when you look at women gaining the right to vote, it happened in those areas. Mm-hmm. When they when they brought Wyoming into the union, they wanted to say, okay, but you can't have women vote. Wyoming said no. You either allow women to vote or we're not coming into the union. And part of the reason they had that power was because of the, the legalized sex trade. That's how a lot of women ended up making their money. Mm-hmm. The first female governor that we had was out in that frontier state. It was Wyoming. And she had ties to the prostitution industry. So, I mean, it obviously empowered women then. And so when we say, you know, we're going to take away now, I think we're doing more disservice to the women who engage in that activity. And I will say, from a moral standpoint, I'm against it. But again, 
But the issue isn't morally because I can't impose my morals on everybody. I'm a Christian. I will say I can't, you know, I'm not going to support that everybody be off of Ramadan because morally I'm against it. But that's that's not how we should govern. That you know, and I think that's part of it is that when we start talking about governing and policy, we need to put in place what's good for the for the whole versus putting in what our own morals say should be right or wrong. I'm not a weed smoker, but I think weed should be. Say that again. Hmm? Say that again. I said when we put in policy, we need to do what's good for the whole and not just what we morally agree with. So it, take that back to my question then. Do you think as black people as a whole that it would be more productive for us to have and within our culture for the legalization? And what I'll say is I, I can't answer that question because I don't know. But I know that when we looked at it historically, women gained a lot of power in areas where you had legalized prostitution. You had legalized sex trade. Mm-hmm. And so I would say if if they set up the system properly, if you know women who did engage in that practice took that their careers seriously and used their careers not just as a personal, you know, I'm just going out here to have sex with a whole bunch of people and make money off it, but actually use it to create a business model, mm-hmm. you could have, you know, a female governor who is tied to the sex trade, but that's how she made her money, because that's what we saw in the past. Do you think that people make conscious decisions, say, you know what, I'm going to go sell sex today? Do you think that that's how sex happens? Do you think that that's how yes. prostitution happens? That's how it happens. Yeah. Or do you think that <laughs> do you think they're in a situation? Do you think Which one do you think happens more? Both. I think it's both. No, so you think they're equal? Yeah, you think, you think, hold on, hold on. You think it's equal <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. Hold, yeah. that people are making sound yeah. decisions to sell sex? Yes. yes. That you, one, look, look at the porn industry. The porn industry I disagree. is disagree. You have some women who get into the porn industry because most. they are forced and because of the but you also have people who make the costumes. You do decisions. have people, and I'm not saying and, that you don't have people, but I'm saying is that when you remove all of the mental... Again, I, I when you remove all of that, you, you're telling me that more women make a choice. I didn't say more. You did just. No, I look. I, 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 I go back to I go back to the porn industry because that is the closest thing we have to what we're talking about here. To so the what? To the porn industry. Okay. It is legal in yeah. certain states, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. when you look at the the people who engage in you know basically selling sex on video. Right. I would say that you probably have a pretty good split of those who choose to do it, the, and the then those who are just in a financial who crunch. Are victims of, of human trafficking are ex foster care kids, mm-hmm. yeah, and kids whose parents are have either significant mental health issues or drug issues, mm-hmm. and they become they find themselves in a situation where that becomes their only choice. Mm-hmm. But if they are human trafficked, then they're not making the conscious decision to do it legally. But, and that's but, what you, and, but, and, but what I believe what the brother said is that even when if they're human traffic and then if it's legal, they may you know choose to do it afterwards after that situation. But their mind is still damaged. Well, I'll say if you if you make it legal, the requirements that you have to do in order to make it legal, it becomes you have to do it as a conscious choice. Like I said, if you have to get a license, like I have to get a license to drive. I have to go and take a test. I have to I read just, up on the rules. I have to disagree. I need there to go is always going to be a have black to market when it comes to stuff like this. It is but always. But we shrink that black market. No. You shrink that black market because if I can, you know, if you increase the punishment and say, hey, if you do this illegally, this is the punishment. I know, I know thousands of people that are still buying marijuana illegally in California. They're still buying it from people. Just, you see what I'm saying? I'm, Making it legal <clears throat> is not going to make it go away. But It's not going to make it go away. But has the market shrunk, that black market shrunk? I, I doubt it. Not for the dudes that I know. <laughs> not maybe for the like dudes I know. Like Colorado, where it's legalized, and they go to the stores and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I mean, if you, maybe. If maybe. you if you make it legal, maybe if you make it legalized, you shrink that black market. I mean, there's still black market alcohol out there, but I mean, how many of us could do that versus going to the ABC store down the street? Tons. In Johnson County. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Tons. I got some little I got some little at home. Yeah. I mean, I mean that's honestly. Yeah. I just and I think and I think we're talking about talking about inanimate objects is totally different than what we're talking about flesh and the human mind and 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 I just I just believe you know I just believe that it's different. I'm I'm not about anybody choosing, not choosing. I'm just not about selling humans. I'm, I'm just not about or renting, that. renting, I mean, leasing. Technically, don't we do that? Anyway? Leasing, with the, leasing like, with the option to purchase. What do you mean? But, don't we do that anyways? It's just not for sex. If, I go, if, if I'm an hourly worker, I'm going in there. My, my corporation is, is paying me for that hour to do a task. Yeah, I'm, not with, not, I'm not with that either. Stop work for yourself. 
Well, that's why I was like, <laughs> like, 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 yeah. yourself. Hey, no, but he was talking he's about his name. But I'm, I'm a lawyer. lawyer. I, I I have my own firm. I yeah, work myself. But we're talking about everybody, you know, but not when, you for But when my client comes to me and says, Hey, I'm gonna give you this money to do this, technically am I not selling myself? Am I not selling my services? You're selling your services. Selling your they services. Uh uh. Selling your services and selling your body. Are, t- are two different things because you're actually more in your situation selling your mind. All right, your your appearance and what they get to do with you physically comes into no play. A construction worker, they're selling their body. Okay, th- then maybe a construction worker is selling their body, but <laughs> and that's semantics you're playing. <laughs> yeah, I'm just you know, saying. but the reality is that's not that's not sex. You know, sex has more to do with just the physical aspect, and that's just the individual I am. You know, I value what sex is. I value the human body. And I believe that trading it for... A lot of the kids who end up becoming victims of of sex trade are former victims of abuse when they were younger. Molestation. Molestation. And And how prominent is that in the black community and unspoken? In in the Hispanic and and black community, it is significant. So to me, you'd be talking about setting up a system. To, that's going to exploit that's right. minority people. That's right. And enable these people without right. mental right. There's a help. Reason, there's a reason why most of those type of, types of places that Robert Kraft is involved in are from out of the country and are Asian. Facts. There's a reason why most modern day pimps are waiting outside of certain group homes for kids to, to become Facts. 18 to sign their way out of foster care knowing there's no place for them to go. There's a reason yeah. that drug play, drugs play yes. hand in hand mm-hmm. with that whole entire and situation. To me, it, it's a little naive to say that we're going to make this legal and regulate it because there's always going to be a group of people that's going to push the edges of that law. But if you can save one, Come on. No, he did not. <laughs> no, he did not hit <laughs> us. With the, if you can save one, <laughs> you can save one. You can save one. But I guarantee you'll destroy millions. I, so. I guarantee you'll destroy millions saving that two hundred. I guarantee. I guarantee that it won't be a noticeable different difference of women coming forward just because there are law, there are laws in place now that protect them to a certain degree. But if you are if you are doing illegal activity, you are less likely to come forward. I mean that that's just that's been proven. If you are engaged, in I agree. Activity, I agree with that. However, are we not, and you look at well, would not lie? You look at immigrant communities and how few of them actually report crimes. And I see I will get the wrap it up, so I'm gonna I'm go ahead and let that go. <laughs> well, let me ask you this: since you know Kamala's kind of pushing this, and you know, I'm sorry, K- Kamala Harris has put kind of you know, he he gave me the side eye because you know I post about. You know, I'm sorry. Whatever. <laughs> How do you think this is going to be, you know, received for her as a presidential candidate? Because I mean, she's kind of come out of the box and she was kind of hot, kind of cooled off a little bit. But you know, she's actually pushing, you know, legalizing sex. You know, honestly, kind of I stuff. don't see this being a big issue as far as the presidential debate. I mean, it's just, I, I just don't think enough people care about it for this to be one of those things saying, "Oh, I can't vote for her." The, right. pe- the people couldn't vote for her before. Yeah. They're, they're, I don't think she's, you know. And then I don't think she's gotten a whole bunch of people say I'm going to vote for her because of this issue either. Yeah, I, I just agree. don't think this is a big issue. I mean, I, like I said, from, a po- from a policy standpoint, I agree with it. Right. But from a political standpoint, I just don't see this pushing the needle. So who do you think is going to um, come out in 2020 on the Democratic side? Mm. It's wide open. I mean, I say my my right now I'm in favor of uh, Julian Castro. Yes. Um, housing's my big thing. He did a lot of great things as um, the Secretary of HUD. Um, even though you haven't really heard much about him, but he's got a lot of connections with the uh, old Obama team. Yeah, um, I think Kamala stands a pretty good chance. I mean, her fundraising numbers look very promising for somebody who is relatively unknown um, when you talk about a national stage. Um, so I think that those, that's, I think Kamala's probably the front runner right now. I think Bernie has, has the lead in name recognition right. and his ability to raise money. I think part of this is going to be... Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I'm tired of him. <laughs> you just the mic? I will say I'm not a big Bernie fan myself, um, <laughs> but I think that you know from a money and a name rec- recognition standpoint, he's already ahead of everybody. Yeah. Um, I think part of it. So the Democratic Party just came out with um, their rules on um, the debates, mm-hmm. and so I think it's going to be interesting to see who meets those rules to get into the debates. They're right. they're only out opening up twenty slots. 
and we already really? know, we we know that there are more than twenty candidates. Right. And but basically, if you have to have a certain percentage of the polls. You know, you mm. have to, you have to be polling at least at three yeah. percent. And or if you know that doesn't get to twenty, then you have to be able to raise. Um, you have to have at least six hundred fifty thousand donors or sixty five thousand donors. Oh mm. wow! Okay. And um, they have to be at least two hundred from each state. So I think that those candidates who are going to struggle fundraising or getting you know, people to donate, because I mean, it's not about how much you raise, but it's about how many donors you have. Right. And so I think you're going to get, so be prepared for a lot of emails from President <laughs> Kennedy to say, hey, just give me a dollar and you can get us into the debate. Right, right, <laughs> because right. I, so I think mm-hmm. that that's going to be interesting to see. Get text too. We're going to get some text. Oh yeah. You're going to get text. You're going to get that. Yeah. You know, you're going to get emails. They're going to start pushing, you know, we don't care how much you give. Give us a dollar. Right. right. But it'll get them into the debate. So I think whoever ends up in those debates are, 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 uh, is going to be interesting. But I think Kamala's a fabulous debater. Um, so I think she'll do well there. But like I said, she's probably my front runner at the moment. Um, if I had to put money on it, it would be on her. Even though, like I said, uh, Julian Castro is my candidate. Okay. Okay, go ahead and hit us with it, Kevin. I want black folks to start participating in the entire aspect of yes. politics okay. and now not just voting. <laughs> right. I vote for the same reason that some people believe in Jesus, just in case. I know Pastor Hill. <laughs> I said some folks, not everybody. Hello, Reverend Mark. Just, like, oh, just in case. All All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but 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 the reality but the reality is because the individual I am and because of my observations of how things have been. Until we participate in the entire aspect of the political process, meaning collectively putting our money together, meaning supporting and having an agenda, meaning going to the meetings. Going to the meetings to create that agenda. They are also (laughs) understanding what the lieutenant governor does, what the commission does, what the city council does, understanding what they do. Also um, involving our youth, but more importantly, grooming our politicians.